Dale Farmer 73 here. What's going on? Let me pull up a chair. We're going to have a little chat. Hope y'all can see me okay or hear me okay. We got a little work to do. Bring y'all downstairs with me. How we doing? Good to see y'all. Uh, GG's Naturals, how you doing, sis? Good to see you. Matter of fact, let me get my little, my little list. Because we're really, I'm about to answer some questions while I work, actually. I want to say hello to everybody. Welcome to the Greenhouse Lounge. What this is, is a, uh, we can do better than this. <laughs> We could do better than this. And, and really, you know, it's your own personal thing on what you could be doing better at right now as far as getting prepared and, and getting your garden together and everything else. We could be doing better than that. Guava, Gigi, guava, guava. We could be doing better. Um, I know I know YouTube is is you know, mostly entertainment, but I think we're missing the point when we use such a vital asset for just entertainment. I think we use YouTube just like we use our, our, our cell phones. Something that could literally change your life for the better. We use it for the, the most ridiculous things, you know? Something so powerful. That cell phone is powerful. That cell phone can either make or break your life that cell phone has made people turn average Joes into millionaires. That, that cell phone can turn average Joes into uh, millionaires and it can turn rich men into poor men real quick. That cell phone can do that. It can ruin people's lives. Look, look just over the last five years, let alone 10 years, how many lives the internet has ruined because you can't get away with all the crimes and, and creepy crap that people usually do, right? But at the same time, some of these social media platforms have made average Joes that would never, ever, ever see the kind of wealth that they see. They're seeing it now. You turn young teenagers into entrepreneurs. You've turned young men and women into moguls, you know, with some of these uh, social media platforms. And it's changed people's lives. But we choose to use the internet and the cell phone to um, watch twerking videos. Or, or you know, just, just nonsense is my point. I'm saying all that to say that what, what could you be doing better right now? What could you be really doing better? YouTube is so much knowledge on this on this platform on just this one alone. It's so much knowledge on this platform, but we don't we don't pay no uh, no mind. We go on with our everyday lives and just look at the the monkey dig uh, ants out of a tree with a stick and eat them. And we'll watch that for an hour, but the things is going to teach you how to fix your finances and. Uh, Fix your marriage. We ain't we ain't think about that. So my own personal battle against myself was uh, prepping, practicing my preps. I know I had fun. Some of us had fun during the the. Uh, I, I changed the name of it too to Survival Slumber Party, just to see if it'll make it a little bit sound more fun. You know. Survival slumber party, because that's what it is. We learning at the same time we having a good time. So I got a lot of questions from those videos that I put out over the last uh, week or so. And this is the thing. I'm, I'm about to answer them. I got y'all questions right here. 
and I answered them because I, I had I had a couple of problems. Please don't look at those videos that I just did out here in rain and look like I was Bear Grylls because I wasn't. That's why I practice. I didn't do that just for you. I did that for me. I do this all the time. My neighbors could tell you. I do this all the time. I come out here and I set up my tent, set up my gear, and I will stay out here for a few days. I do that because you just never know. And I'm here to tell you today what I could have did better. Things I forgot and things that some of y'all suggested and some of the, uh, some of the things y'all asked. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that could have been better. That could have been better. Okay, so what would I do different? I want to say hello to everybody just coming into the chat. Welcome to the Greenhouse Lounge. Okay, I'm going to start up with, uh, what would I do different? Did anybody, did anybody do this at all? I, I don't think so. I don't think nobody did, but just, just asking, just in case. So I'm going to just go on here and get started because I really don't want to be on here long. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer this question first before I get started because I didn't write it down. Everybody said, how often should you spray your tent? We got a two-part question because one person asked me, what part of the tent do you spray? I did a video on that this, this summer. Okay. The second person asked me, how often should you spray Okay, I'm going to tell you what I do. I can't tell you what you should do. I spray everything that's exposed to the elements. Anything that's exposed to the outside, the sun, the rain, the moon, that's what I spray. I'm going to show you the silicone as well. It's, you can use any kind of silicone spray you want. This is just a, a brand that I have. Okay. Somebody said, do you spray your rain fly? Yes. I soak my rain fly. Your rain fly, which I'm about to do right now. And by answering that question, I'm about to spray my rain, my, uh, my rain fly. And I spray the whole thing. My tent, not so much. My tent is right here too. How often should you spray your rain fly? Every single time I use it and have either I have extreme heat or I have extreme rain, either one, I will spray it again because that stuff is not there forever. That's not a permanent fix. So every time I use my tent, I spray it again. I don't just spray it and just leave it on there for five years and you know, hope for the best. Okay. So that's what I do. And I'm about to spray it real quick because I took my tent down, but I don't. Oh, here's one other thing. Do not ever put your tent away with it. <laughs> Sorry. Don't put your tent away wet. What's wrong with the bug net? I don't know. I don't understand your question, Laura. Lorna. What do you mean, what's wrong with the bug net? Yeah, never put your, your tent away wet, ever. Because you'll come back out and get ready to use it when you're ready for it. And you'll have a big mold salad sandwich. I done threw away about two different tents years ago that way. Even if it's just a little damp, don't do it. Just set it to the side and stand it up, put it somewhere, but don't let that, don't put that back in the case that you had it in. Okay, all that mildew and mold get in there. If you still have a tent, when you open it up, you don't want to sleep in it. Number one, the smell. Number two, that mold get in your lungs, you land in that tent like that. Uh, so we have large bell tents have to be treated every season i treat mine every single time i use them i don't wait every season no more well it depends on how often you do this i do this a lot 
So I spray every single time I do it because I know it rained the other night for three days here and my tent took a beating. So your, your tent stay up for months. I wouldn't do that unless you literally live in it. I wouldn't do that because your tent is being stretched by the poles or whatever is holding it up and the elements between the heat and the cold and the rain is stretching it, making it more loose and more flimsy. Now, if you live in it, that's a whole nother ball game. Uh, they are four season tents. I know that means they can be put up in any season. That don't mean leave them up for four seasons. <laughs> You're going to have a problem. Because think about it. Anything left out in the elements, anything. Anything left out in the elements is going to fail. I got an umbrella. That beach umbrella, y'all saw it look like a damn dragon done bit into it? That just sits out on my back porch. Nobody uses it. It just sits there. And it been there for a year. When I put it out there, it was beautiful. I set it up there for Lady Led. So when she put her little plants on the back porch, yeah, I went to use it just now with the camp. Right? And it looked like, you know, Dorothy had that going to Oz. It didn't work out. So even it's called a four season tent, meaning you can use it in all four seasons. That don't mean you should leave it out all four seasons. I'm telling you, trust me on that. You can Google it. I, I promise you, I, I, don't, I wouldn't steer you wrong on that. I just don't want you to, hey, uh, black single mom homestead, how you doing? I wouldn't want you to have a failure when you when you least expect it. So I'm gonna get right into this again. What I would do different. First, first, uh, I spray my rain tarp while I talk. Okay, I'm gonna just show you this. I'm gonna try to keep on time with y'all. You see, I didn't put my I didn't put my tarp away. I didn't put nothing away my tent because it was wet. I did put my rain fly away because it was dry. Let me see. It's called Buds and I understand. So look at that. See that? That still got some, some dampness in it. So all I'm going to do is leave it out even longer. I'm not going to spray it. that out I'm gonna just stretch that out I'm gonna just stretch that out so while we talk normally I would wipe that down but I don't have a towel which is another one of my things we were gonna talk about too okay so let me get back in here all right <clears throat> get out that sun with y'all okay so all i'm gonna do let me let me show it don't matter what spray you use it don't matter what spray this is just some old spray i found wally world it, it don't matter just silicone spray okay <clears throat> any kind of silicone spray all i'm doing is going to spray that whole rain fly and what, before I use my tent again, I'm going to just spray that bottom part that's exposed to the, to the bottom of the, the elements. So I'm going to get in here. Any kind, of, any kind of silicone. Matter of fact, I don't even know if they make this anymore. So any kind of silicone. There's no specific brand. That's why I haven't thrown a brand out to you. Uh, Lorna... <clears throat> okay, here we go. So, uh, next time I'll bring more towels. More towels. Uh, how you doing? I can't, uh, Miller, I can't pronounce your first name, okay? I'm not going to burn that up. Bring more things to, number one, wash up. 
You don't want the same, unless this just a grid down, grid down, apocalypto type of situation. Don't bring your, your towel that you're going to be washing up with. You also need something that you're going to be cleaning your dishes and, you, and your other stuff with too, right? So bring it, bring, I, I love them cotton towels because they dry fast. They dry really fast. All those other synthetic fibers take forever to dry. Or they don't absorb water well. Um, is it okay to spray it down while it's still wet? Absolutely not. Don't do that. Because think about what you're doing. You'll be spraying on top of water that's going to roll off. So wherever that water was, there, is, there will be no seal there. Because all you're doing is spraying on top of water droplets. Don't do that. Make sure your rain fly is completely dry before you spray it. Okay? So, uh, other thing, other thing I, I slept on, or, whew, no pun intended, other thing I, I slept on or, or lack thereof. Oh my God, go spend some money on a good mat. Or, or bring extra pillows if you got the space. If, if this isn't a grid down, pack out situation and you're just going camping. Um, let me see. Need to be more selective now. What channels to focus? Substance. So be um, either bring more pillows if you can. If you cannot, get you a good mat. Now. You know what Lady Liz said? I'm sitting there like, I'm going to go, and everybody's like, oh, Liz, go get a yoga mat. Go get a yoga mat. That yoga mat is paper thin. The ground is wet and soft. It ain't that it's, it's, it's a hard surface. It's just, you know, the contours of your body, and, you know, your arm is up on you, lay to the side and all that kind of stuff. It's uncomfortable. You need something that's going to absorb a, a little bit. Of, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm running up on 50 real quick. And it's getting to a point where, yo, just laying down there on the ground like that. Nah, ain't, yoga mat ain't going to do it. I need to do some yoga to get comfortable. But you ain't going to lay on that all night. I, I'm, I'm telling you from experience, I promise to you, a yoga mat ain't, ain't going to cut it. A yoga mat ain't going to cut it. Okay, I went and saw one today. I'm coming from there maybe two hours ago, and I was like, yeah, everybody said yoga mat. I don't even know what the hell a yoga mat is, but I can't wait to see one. I seen them yoga mats. Nah, I'm going to tell you what I did see, though. I went out, and they got them, they got camp mats, this foam, that thick. But uh, Thank you, Super, Super Farm. I was just about to say that. Camping mats is about that thick, about an inch and a half thick, and you roll them up. But what's even better than that is them kindergarten mat, them kindergarten mats that's made out of sponges. I went and seen them, and I I didn't get none because there was a, it wasn't many left, and this lady was looking at some. I didn't want you know be no bully and take no kindergarten mats for, from her kids or nothing, but she was about to get got. Okay, so. After this live, I'm going to run back out and go somewhere else because I knew I was going live. I'm going to go somewhere else and I'm going to get me some kindergarten mats. Now, this is what Lady Led said. Lady Led said, where's your, um, where's your blow up mats from the swimming pool that you keep in your bug out bag? Gentlemen, gentlemen, all you bachelors out there, all you bachelors, this go out to my bachelors. Brothers, this is why, this is why we need to settle down with a good one. Okay, mind you, this is why we need to settle down with a good one. Cause you a good man. Clearly, I know you thinking good inside your head, inside your heart. But gentlemen, gentlemen, my bachelors, my gentlemen, my good men out here. Okay, all right. Young bachelors turn into old lonely men. Young bachelors become old lonely men. And I'm going to tell you, I ain't saying going out there and just go grab you any old one of them, all right? I'm telling you, man, you get you a good one. And you hang on to that mug because I'm telling you, every, I, I've been, I've been deep in this by 30, over 30 years, 35 years. 
And I'm telling you, every time I think I got everything laid out and I'm cool and ain't nobody, can't nobody tell me nothing, she hit me with the old sling blade. Ain't no gas in it. Mm -hmm. French fried taters. <sighs> I sat there at the breakfast table smelling like a house fire because I had just came in, backbone burning, hurting, crumbled up from camping in the rain. She said, oh, you alive. <laughs> And I said, oh, yeah, my backbone a little tore up. She said, uh, what you sleep on? I said, I tried to cram a couple pillows up under me, you know. She said, well, what did you, why didn't you get your, um, the blow up swimming pool mat that you keep in your, all the bug out bags? You was preaching that. It was a bunch of people thought you was crazy. You was preaching that. Look, <laughs> now you tell me, <laughs> practice your freaking preps. Fellas, bachelors, young men, go get you a good one because once you think you know everything, you don't. They prove it to you every, every freaking time. Ladies, that go, that go, that reciprocate. Ladies, ladies, yeah, young queens turn into old lonely ladies if you keep on trying to think you can do everything by your damn self. Gentlemen, young players, young bachelors, end up being old grumpy old men get off of my damn lawn you son don't do it your only engagement with other human life will be telling people to get the hell off your grass instead of telling somebody how your day went you'll be yelling at the ducks on your grass get off of my damn grass you always over here pooping on my damn grass it's it's man get you a good one okay i'm gonna keep it going so we can get out of here number two Biggest mistake I made. Biggest mistake I made. Let me show you right here. A matter of fact, I'm going to scoot up a little bit so I can get this together. Big, one of the biggest mistakes I made. Now, y'all know my, my bug out bag weigh almost 50 pounds, right? So I was doing everything in my power to lighten it up, lighten it up. And I even said, now, I've been, I've been preaching this for years, for years. I've been preaching. I've been saying... I only use metal utensils. I only use metal utensils. And the reason I did that, and I always say that, is because not only are they durable, but they can be used as a weapon. They're not just for eating. They're not just for eating. They also can protect you, okay? They also can protect you they also can dig okay so with that being said me big dummy i i get rid of all my metal utensils and put them in the garage no nah, not even no sport get just get the get the all the real damn things i mean that's just some weight that you're just going to have to train with don't go trying to half-ass that. Don't. Don't. Now, I'm going to tell you why. In that second video, in the video where I was like I was going crazy in the tent, if you watch that in the, in the beginning of that video, you see my spoon melted. Guess when I melted it? The night before when I was cooking inside the tent. It didn't take nothing for that so-called high-grade plastic PVC spoon to melt like ice cream. So I was thinking to myself, if this was a real messed up situation, I just melted half of my fork. So it, that's all it took was just to sit in a hot pot for a couple of minutes and it melted that told me two things number one number one yo this this is not safe number two whatever this is made of and i'm putting this in my mouth could probably kill me no plastic utensils family your 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 metal utensils can be used for more stuff your biggest thing you want to learn how to do and look it don't have to be no high quality camp with the holes in it all stuck together, multi-tool crap. You know what I did? 
I went out and got four sets because I'm getting rid of all that plastic crap out of all my bug out bags and put my metal back in it. I went to Walmart and grabbed, you know, the little bulk spoon, forks, knife section. Don't go trying to get no fancy stuff, no fancy feast. This, four of these cost a dollar and some change, like $1.27. Four of these, $1.27. Four of these, $1.27. I got two sets of each. So I can put all of those, that's eight sets, put all those in all my bags, in all my situations. Don't, don't leave home without it. Number two, I don't even have to look at the list for this. Number two, I'm going to tell you something I forgot. And that night while I was cooking, while I was cooking in the, um, inside the tent, this is something you should never forget. And I preach this, I preach this, I preach this. And in my RV, even Lady Lea think I'm nuts. Uh, Lady Lea think I'm nuts because I, I got these all throughout the RV. And, and, and uh, Gigi's Natural, Gigi's Natural and Eco Neighbor, I know y'all probably do too. And if you don't, you know, switch the game on that. Look, this is the one I keep it with me. I, this is supposed to be with me. Now, I got ones that's bigger than this in my RV. But I this, I was supposed to put in all my bug out bags. And I keep leaving it. It's, it was in my garage. Put your fire extinguisher this is just a spray. You can use this as a trigger spray. The other one I got, got a button on the top. You just spray it just like Lysol. And it shoot out that doggone stuff. Keep this in. Oh, my God. Don't be out here. Because I was thinking to myself, what I do with my damn uh, fire extinguishers? Never, never put it in my pack. I never even put them in my pack. So while I'm putting my camp gear away on the camping shelf, I see these. I felt like a fool. This is all you need. Look, look how big it is. This is all you need. You don't need that big old, you know, this is all you need. This mug work a miracle. Okay. <clears throat> now, everybody was asking me, uh, cause I had my buddy heater going and baking soda. You know what? I got baking soda inside of a, a, a baby powder bottle. You know, uh, that's what I spray my diet, diatomaceous earth. When I spray my diatomaceous earth, I put it in a baby bottle. I got tons of videos from years ago that that's how I spread my diatomaceous earth. So it don't get on everything, right? It only get where I want it to go. Well, I got uh, baking soda the exact same way. That's all in my kitchen. So, you you know, people be trying to do it in that little box and it be locked up in there. Don't do that. Put it in an old baby powder, you know, the talcum powder thing and squeeze it and shoot out like a cloud, just like this thing will. Okay, I'm going to show you that too. Now, everybody was like, um, <clears throat> where's your... Uh, 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 carbon monoxide detector. Oh, you're going to die to death. I kept telling everybody throughout that whole video. I kept saying it's right behind the camera. I just can't get to it. The carbon monoxide detector and the fire alarm is right behind y'all. I just can't get to it. This all it is. It costs like $10. It ain't no big deal. I'm not a fireman, you know. It, it warns you if the carbon monoxide and the O2 is getting a little ugly, it tell you to get out and it, it read across the screen and it only costs about 10 bucks or so. If, if I don't know if, what it costs now, but that's it. No big deal. So everybody was like, oh, you're going to choke to death. You go wake up in heaven. And I was like, no, no, I, I got the dang on thing. I don't trust anybody. So I always got some kind of secondary backup. It, I just couldn't get to it right behind my doggone camera, okay? So, there you go with that. All right, we, I'm going to mark this off because we gonna, I'm going to hurry up and run down this list so I can talk to you. So, get a sleeping, sleeping mat, some kind of sleeping mat. Get a cot. Uh, this is one of the biggest ones, biggest ones. I want to say welcome to everybody in the chat. Hey, Triple Threat. Hey, Sinead Moss. Bring as many tarps as you can 
bring out as many tarps as you can. If you got four tarps, doggone it, they should be on hand at all times. I told y'all that I'd rather have tarps than a tent. And that's why you don't see no tents on my pack, because I got two tarps inside my pack. Bring them doggone tent, them tarps out, and I'm going to tell you why. One, number one, your first tarp go up under your tent, period, okay? Number two, if it start raining really, really bad, and your tent can't handle it and you getting leaks, you can drape a tarp over top of your tent. That's going to help repel that water, that hard rain. Number three, you can set up a lean-to right here where I was barbecuing at so your fire don't go out. I told you, don't let that fire go out. That fire go out, you in danger. Now you, now you in danger zone. You let that fire go out. So that tarp could be uh, covered over. You could set that up any kind of way to cover your fire. Cover. I could have been cooking outside instead of trying to cook in my tent. Do not cook in your tent <laughs> unless you don't, not in one of these. Maybe you can do it in a, a hot tent, but not in one of these. Okay, well, in a canvas tent, you could probably pull it off because it'll kind of absorb that moisture, but not these. All right, so make sure you got your, uh, let me see. Oh, make sure you got your, um, um, that threw me off. Make sure you got your, your uh, paracord out. Don't have that packed in your pack. You should have some paracord in your pack, and you should have paracord dangling from something. Have that paracord out. That go the leaf master. The leaf master is at it. Have that paracord out because when I was kept wiping all the condensation inside the tent, wiping all the condensation inside the tent. Um, now, now my problem is, how am I gonna drive my dry my towel off, right? I need this. I need this dry. And if my socks would have got wet, I need these to be hanging from something drying. So I could have uh, tied my rope from pole to pole inside my tent and been hanging my rags, hanging my towels, so they can dry. And I was like, man, I'm slipping. You need to hang everything that you you know you're going to need is going to keep needing to get dry, you know, or just to get it out of the way to say give you more space. Okay? So, I said that, got that more tiles, yeah, got that. Okay. Refrigeration. Refrigeration is everything. Now, just so happened it was cold. It was cold enough for, that my food didn't spoil. Refrigeration in any way, form, or fashion is vital. Whether you dig your own cold box or you bring a 12-volt refrigerator freezer of whatever size that you can keep it protected. Now, on that, I'm going to talk about, no, you cannot leave it outside in the rain. No 12-volt refrigerator can you leave out in the elements. It needs to be protected just like you. So your refrigeration is vital. If you can fit it in the tent with you, which we're going to get on that too, put it in there. If not, go and cover it up any way you can and do not let it sit on the ground because the water might pool up and you will have a mess on your hands. Refrigeration is vital. Okay? <clears throat> so got that now with that being said that you need refrigeration and you might not have room in your tent this was extra super important if you are a person of age if you have seen your first gray hair i don't care if you're 20 <laughs> if you have either seen your first gray hair or lost your first patch of hair okay we're gonna put it right there so that uh that, that i ain't gotta say no age numbers because that that varies if you have lost your first patch of hair if you get into the point you like this if you start doing this or you start pulling that first gray hair You want to listen to this. 
get a taller damn tent. All of that crunched over on your knees like I was doing, humped over like that. I haven't used this tent in forever. So I'm hunched over, crouched over, crouch, crouch, tiger, hidden dragon in the tent. Let me tell you something. A grown ass man need to stand up for himself. Literally, he need to stand up to stretch it and make the make your backbone pop that, you know, you know what it sound like, like somebody hit a tennis ball. Like, <laughs> Serena Williams, that backbone sound like Serena Williams. Oh, <laughs> like Serena Williams all in your back. Serena and Venus playing each other. All them joints popping like tennis ball. <laughs> oh, don't get no little ass tent trying to save no money. Because you're going to save money, but at the expense of your backbone and your joints. Being crouched down like that is foolish. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay? Do, if you, I'm, this is my new rule. This tent right here will only be for my, either my children, and they of age now too. But when I have grandchildren, I'll have this tent. Or this tent will be for my supplies. Thank you, Gigi. This tent will be for my supplies. I'm too grown and too old to be down there uh, uh, crawling around like freaking Schmeagle. The precious. I'm all, I'm all hunched over on the camera like, <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> what the hell? No, no, we ain't gonna do that. So buy a tent that's taller than you. Yes, the gazelle, don't, the gazelle T3, T4, I would suggest a T4 because you got your equipment. Now, this is why everybody was like, oh, I got the gazelle T3 and I got, I'm gonna tell you something. This is the part that everybody forget. It's not, it's usually not just you. It's you and a spouse or it's you and your children. It's you, your children and your gear. Your gear is going to take up either as much space or more space than you will. The gear that you need to camp or survive is either going to take up as much space or more space than you will. You need a place to lay down, so that's going to be your bedding area. Ain't nothing going over there. You need a place probably, you probably use your bed for a chair, but you need a place for your food, like a little kitchen corner, a little area. You're going to need another place where you need to put your shoes and wet stuff. You're going to need a, a little corner to poop in. All of this stuff is important. So I say go with the T4. Don't go with the T3. The T3 gives enough space for one person. One person and their equipment. Or if you that damn in love and you can't get up off the top of each other, two people and y'all equipment. You get what I'm saying? If this is date night, I get it. <clears throat> so, uh... Go with as big a tent as you can possibly get, okay? I promise you, go with a bigger tent. The T3 is, is good, but go with that T4. It's just, it's just about $50 more or something like that. The one that I got, it, it don't cost much more money. than the, the, and, and I promise you this, don't get the T4 with the, the screen porch. Don't get that one. The one that has the screen porch, you're never going to sit in that thing, ever. You're not. And the one that I have, the second area has that same freaking screen. Just not as, you know, it's not as much screen. You want as much tent and protection space as you can possibly get. So... Skip right over that one with just the little screen porch thing. Skip right over that. All right. That T4 gives me and Lady Led tons of room, but even more room. Say my all my kids was with me. We would be great. And then you don't want the toilet 
right by your head. You don't want your, your uh, pudding bucket right here at your head while you trying to sleep. Okay? We're going to get into that too. You want that a little ways away from you. If you can get it outdoors. And I promise you, you're not going to want to keep going in and out and in and out of your tent all day and all night. Because every time you unzip that freaking zipper, 20 mosquitoes come in. I don't care how careful you are. I don't care how small you are slipping in and out of that tent. You're going to let in at least 20 mosquitoes going out and 20 more when you're coming back in from peeing. Just set you up a bucket in a corner, poop bucket. If you got the T4 or bigger tent, I'm telling you. Uh, so there you go. All right. So please get a taller tent. Get something that's tall. These little dome tents ain't going to do it. Now, again, this is not necessarily a survival situation. This is to practice your preps for that survival situation. Survival situation, you don't need none of this. And it's just good luck. Okay? Somebody tried to get me with that the other day. Why do you need so much stuff if you're surviving? So we're going to leave that alone. Number three. If you can't afford it, if you can bring it, bring as much power as you can. My EcoFlow 1800, I got in the I started my day off with 75%. By the morning, it was dead, and I didn't have that many things connected to it. So, I left a couple of lights on. You know, it's dark out here. and Stuff was crunching around the leaves. There you go. Bring as much power as you can. Number two, if you can afford it, if you can bring it, bring backup to your backup. So somebody said, why didn't you just connect your gas generator, your Honda, which I have behind me? Why didn't you bring that? I didn't think of that. That was smart. That, that's what I could have did better. That's very smart. The thing was, my integrity wouldn't let me go back in the house to get none of this stuff that I'm reading off to you now. Everybody kept saying, why don't you just run back in the house and get it? Oh, Leah, we'll forgive you going on back in the house. And no, that ain't what this is about. You can't run back in the house and grab stuff in a tornado. You can't run back in the house and go get stuff when it's been a house fire. You can't run back in the house and grab stuff when it's a flood. So you got to put it in your head like, I can't go back in the house. I can't go in the garage. So whatever I'm stuck here with, this is it. So you could actually get the real actual feeling of being completely on your own. Like, yo, I don't have enough food. I don't have enough gear. I don't have enough power. What am I going to do? So now you start calculating how much power do I have? Okay, what do I need to use it for? And how long is this weather going to be like this? Because I don't know how long I'm going to be able to maintain with this amount of power, this amount of fire, this amount of wood, this amount of water. It makes you really start Instead of guzzle, guzzle, guzzle on your water, it makes you stop and just sip it. You just drink it just enough that you need. Sip a little water. Just enough what you need instead of just wasting your water. You ain't washing your hands with all the water and rinsing off. No, you're using that hand sanitizer, right? And drying it off with a towel. You're doing the best you can do. So that's why I didn't go back in the house. But... Having my gas generator, very smart. We're going to be talking about the gas generator too. Thank you, James Parrish. Said, this is good. I'm upgraded with my checklist to cover some of the things you talk about. Thanks. As they say, good word. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. But having that gas generator, we're going to talk about gas versus, I ain't going to say versus solar. I'm going to say gas and solar. We're going to have a gas and solar at the same time talk. I'm gonna have this Honda with me and I'm gonna have one of my big, big boys. And I'm gonna bring it out and we are gonna talk about it, okay? <clears throat> Pros and the cons, there you go. So thank you for that, Dave, correct. You're trying your best to emulate real survival. And one of those is 
nature ain't giving you a choice to go back in the house. Okay? So, all right, I got the, I bring the gas. No cooking indoors. If you can help it, if you do not have a hot tent, those hot tents are made for cooking indoors. They're made for that. They're like, even for like ice fishing tent. Uh, ice fishing tent or a hot tent. They're made to handle that kind of stuff. So, the one of these normal camping tents, try not to, try not to cook in them in weather that's going to cause condensation. Okay? Tr try to uh, really not put yourself in that situation because that condensation can lead to moisture even in your lungs and, and you will end up getting messed up so that's why i kept stopping the video and wiping my walls down you i do not want moisture you do not want moisture build up inside your tent if moisture builds up inside your tent that is dangerous in all kinds of ways number one you might wake up in a pool of water number two that moisture is just getting into your lungs you don't know what's on your floor mixing with that water okay <clears throat> Right, you, you, you know, you say pneumonia is no fun. Now, you know you don't. All right, so uh, I got the metal utensils, fire extinguisher, baking soda. Oh, we done. And for the most part, for the most part, the part I, I messed up on, I should have stayed out even longer. That's it. I should have stayed out even longer. So, with that, my family, that's that's what I went through. And that's what I wrote down. And I wanted everybody to know it was not perfect. And it's things that we can work on. But you will not know. You do can't judge off of what I did. You won't know unless you do it. Because your situation won't be like mine. Your situation will be completely different. Uh, did you do any foraging? No. Uh, thank you, main course encouragement. I want to now I can welcome everybody into the greenhouse lounge and I can answer some questions before we get out of here. What we got? What we got? Any questions for me? Because this, this, I do this to, to tell myself, you could do better than this. We can do better than this. Because if it really happened, if it really go down, what are you going to do? Uh, what types of food did you bring then? It's, it's not what types of food I brought. What kind of food should you bring? What kinds of food should you bring? That's the question. It's not about me. That's why we should. This is called practicing your, your preps, not mine. What solar generator do I like? I like them all. How would you carry all of this if you had to move? That's a good question. And I just said it a little earlier that this was not a, a bug out situation. This was a we practicing our preps, practicing our equipment. This is a more of a situation where, OK, they're giving you a warning that, OK, uh, say a hurricane is coming and you need to pack up and leave and you can't take everything with you, but you need some of the basics. This was that. Okay, this was that. This ain't no, your house just burnt down or it's on fire, so grab your pack or a siren just went off, grab your pack. The pack that I have with me is the pack where I, I plan on never coming back. I don't plan on coming back. That's the bug out bag I got. That 50 pounder is that. I don't think we talked about showering, cleaning your body. What approaches do you recommend? I did talk about it that night. Those towels, bringing extra towels and soap. 
And matter of fact, somebody even cracked on me and was like, uh, Uncle Led brought the whole bottle of Parmolive with him. That's my camp soap. That's everything. That's the dish soap. That's the body soap. It'll turn into toothpaste if stuff get ugly. But yes, you need to clean yourself. You need to get yourself together. And of course, I'm not going to sit and do that on camera. Okay? So, um, yeah, wet wipes are, wet wipes are okay. You know, body wipes are okay, but man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing gonna, gonna get them germs off you. you. You're doing this to get the germs off. Ain't nothing really gonna get them germs off of you better than soap. You know, nothing is going to get the, 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 I'm not so much worried about the funk. I'm worried about diseases and catching bacteria. All I'm worried about that. I'm worried about my health. I'm not worried about the stink. Okay, that's like how what kind of deodorant should I bring? Yeah, I ask, that I'm not even that's not even on my mind. You know. So this situation is more set for they're telling you a hurricane is coming. Pack it up and move it out. And, but you got, say you got two hours to get what you need to get and get out of here. They have toilet paper, towel, tablets, and yeah, I got towel tablets. But for the most part, again, those cotton rags and a good, a good pair of socks. <sighs> Clean him right up, <laughs> I'm telling you. What's the longest I've practiced my preps? Uh, two weeks. Because that third week, we was like, that's enough. Uh, have you ever camped out at different locations? Rios, you must be new to the channel. I do it all the time. Go back into my camping bug out survival playlist. You're going to see me all around the country. Me and Lady Led and sometimes my, my kids. I, I'm, listen, honestly, I'm blessed to be able to do this in my own yard, on my own land. I'm blessed to do it here. This is why I do this. It's too, somebody even asked me like, why are you camping out in your backyard and your house is only, is right there behind you? What a stupid question. Um, and I, I no, they was being a smart ass is what it was. It wasn't a stupid question. It was, they was being a smart ass because anybody knew they had been watching for even two minutes knew. The whole thing was called practice survival, right? You got to practice at home. You don't go and take the freaking uh, uh, exam for school and you ain't did no practicing. You just don't run out there and your life depends on it. Say your career depends on it and you didn't practice. You don't go to college all them years and then now you about to take the final test and you ain't did no practicing, no studying. That's what this is, but this is real life. That's, this is real life. Say, I want a, a tool for security and safety. Which one would you recommend? I'm not going to recommend that because that depends on you. You, If you don't know which one you need, you need to go talk to a professional trainer in your area. A professional certified trainer. Get trained. Rent a tool. Let them show you how to use it and be trained properly. That's not like what pair of shoes do I like? Like I like some Jordans. That's not, that's not that. Okay. That's a life saver and a life taker. That's nothing you want to get. No advice from nobody on YouTube. Go talk to a certified professional and get training for your tools for protection. Don't, because what you're going to get when you start asking people on, on YouTube about what tools should you get for yourself for self-defense you're going to get a bunch of people sticking their they 
chest out. Yeah, you should get a Glock 19. No, no, a Glock 17. No, you should get a 1911. 1911 is for a real man. That's for real protection. No, you should get a 9mm. No, 9mm is for sissies. What you should get is a 45 caliber. No, I only carry the 50. You're going to get that because there's a lot of doggone pissing contests when it comes to firearms. Go talk to a real professional. And half of the people that's going to be telling you which ones you need to purchase, they don't even own one. They half-ass only own a slingshot and a Red Ryder BB gun, and they're trying to tell you to go get some kind of Rambo equipment. You don't need that. Okay? I'm telling you, as a professional, don't do that. You, you ask that question here on the Internet, you're going to get a lot of Rambos coming out the woodworks telling you you need to go get a desert eagle you see you don't even know what that is but you will hear it if you ask that question you need to go get you a desert eagle <laughs> with a rocket launcher connected to the bottom of it you're gonna hear a lot of nonsense so don't please for your own safety don't ask nobody that question here on the internet on the whole internet watch videos but go talk to a professional okay I promise you, I just did you a world of good. I promise you, I just did. Because I get that question all the time. And in the comments, as soon as somebody leave that comment, I will get about four to 15 people telling them what kind they need to get. And I even used to experiment, ask them, what kind you got? Well, I ain't got nothing right now, but my cousin got a... You're telling this young lady to go out and buy this. You don't got nothing? Because of your cousin, you about to get somebody killed. I promise to you, don't, don't do that. Talk to a licensed, seasoned professional. Go get extensive training. And what you're going to end up knowing, after you know what you're doing, you're going to know what fits you. Lady Led is trained and highly trained. She knows what fits her. And guess what? What fits her don't fit me, which I kept trying to put... Some, xyz in her hand she's like i just don't like it which was my favorite i just can't rock with that so what she ended up going with is something completely different like wow want to know something else i end up liking it myself i bought it for her i end up liking it so much i went and got me one so you have to see what fits you and what you can put that target if you could put that uh that that nail on the on the wall if you can put it on there anywhere you want it to go, that's the one you want. It ain't gonna be pretty, it might not be pretty, okay? But that's the one you want. You just don't go picking stuff because it's cute. I see a lot of young ladies going to get certain things. Hey, game nerd mom, happy man. Certain people going to get stuff just because it's pink. Just because it's pink. It ain't, it, they is. The ergonomics is bad, the reliability is horrible and they get it because it's pink next thing you know you can't if you when it come down to defending yourself you couldn't hit a dog on the side of a barn with it what good is it you just got a pretty rock you'll probably hit them if you threw it at them but you ain't gonna hit it with all i, I, I promise you Don't get it just because it's pink. I ain't saying nothing wrong with a pink one. I'm saying don't get it because it's pink. Okay. So, any, any other questions? at all before we get out of here. I don't want to keep y'all too long today. I done had y'all for about eight or 10 hours just in two days alone. Yeah, or oh, they got them purple ones too. Yeah, that's just don't get it because it's purple or lavender. Pink camo. Now, Lady Les is pink, but is pink and engraved but she didn't get it because it was pink she liked one and i found one that was pink 
She didn't get it because, matter of fact, she ain't know nothing about it. As a matter of fact, everybody know I got it for her for Valentine's Day about two years ago. Okay, no more questions. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, silver shining like new mint coins. Yeah, that's why I say it don't matter what color it is. Just don't get it because it's pink. Because, you know, I love nickel plated and chrome. I got a lot of it. I didn't buy certain things just because it's nickel plated and chrome, though. All right, you guys, that's it. So what I'm going to do, I'm about to put this tin away. Oh, 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 before I go, before I go, do you got, can you, you guys got about five more minutes, five more minutes, just five. I'm not going, I'm not kidding around, just five more minutes because I do want to tell you something that's very, very, very important. Five minutes. Okay. One last thing that I want to suggest. I got one suggestion for you. If you can afford it and if you can um when you're looking for tents what's your question uh jay bravo what's your question um if you can i'm waiting jay bravo if you can when you're looking for a tent if you can find a pop-up tent do it if you can find a pop-up tent, do it. I am an avid camper and have been for almost 25, no, no, 30 years. 30 years, 30 years. 30 years with tents. I was a kid making my own shelters. Please get a pop-up tent. I'm going to show you why. If you get a, now, it ain't too many hot tents that's pop-up tents. They got ice fishing tents that can pop up, but not the hot tents. When you get a hot tent, you pretty much got to put in a little work. Pop-up tents, are they easier to put up? That's why I wanted you to give me five more minutes because I'm about to literally show you right now, okay? I'm going to show you why, why a pop-up tent is go ahead and spend the extra 20 to 30 to 50 bucks. This is why. This is the tent. This is the tent, okay? I'm not gonna set it on the tarp. This is the whole tent that I slept in the other day. And the one that me and Lady Lynn slept in, the T4, it's, it's not too much bigger than this. It's just a little bit more to it. So I'm gonna do this to show you how fast this works. You put that down. You see, can you y'all see okay? Can y'all see that? I'm trying to okay. This is it. And then you get in. You put your rain tarp over it. And then you get in. You're done. That's it. Stake it down. Put your rain fly on. Get in. Okay. Pop up tent. It's worth the extra 50 bucks. Now. You're, you've been at camp for a week. Three days, you're tired, you're exhausted, you and whoever you don't brought, brought with you stink. Y'all just ready to get the hell in the truck and go. You don't feel like taking down all of the tent and the poles and da 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 da.
put that in the truck and go. I told you it was going to take only just five minutes. Five minutes. So when you find these pop-up tents, and you're looking for a tent, please, there was nothing to hear. All you had to do was watch me do that. When you're looking for a pop, when you're looking for a tent, please take it from me. Spend a couple of more dollars and buy the pop-up edition of whatever it is. It literally takes 30 seconds to set up. You're going to see a lot of that online. People saying it only takes 30 seconds. It takes 30 freaking seconds. It's up in 30 seconds. Now you staking it down, go ahead and give it a whole 60, 60 seconds. One full minute. Stake it down if you want to. Put your rain tarp on. Putting the rain tarp on going to take you another 30 seconds to a minute. Two minutes? It's either back in the bag ready to go or it's time to set it up. Setting up your traditional tent like all the other ones I have takes, it takes time. And then you got to remember how to do it too. Like this pole goes where? Now, oh, I turned it and then you did all that and you realize these poles don't even go in this way. Those go in for the, the, the awning on the front. This supposed to go, trust me. If you can do it, go for, I got it down in the description box below for the T4, the one, the big orange one y'all saw me go to camp with, okay? So go check that out if you can. So, uh, first time watching Great Show. Thank you, JD. Thank you. I'm going to see if, I'm going to see if, uh, you say how you blinked and you missed the whole thing. That was it. Can you recommend a winter tent I have to walk? If you wait till, I think Monday, I am going to recommend one. I'm going to show you exactly what it is. It's going to be a hot tent. Okay. I got a whole hot tent set up and it'll be here. And I'm literally going to listen family. So, you know, I'm going to be doing this again. I'm going to be doing this again. I, I hope before the holiday hit. Definitely before the new year, but hopefully before the holiday. I'm going to be right back out here in a hot tent with my wood burning stove going. I will show you my wood burning stove now because I've had it for a while. I'm going to have that in a hot tent and we're going to make it work. I just hope it. I hope it fit because I got the I got the hot I mean, the wood burning stove, I just ain't got the tent yet. So the tent is coming, so I can show you the whole spread. Now, again, I'm going to be telling you again, all transparency, I have never owned a hot tent before. I've done some strange stuff in a normal tent, but I've never owned a hot tent before. So this will be a first with a hot tent, okay? An actual real hot tent. So you need two types of tent in hot and cold weather um not necessarily not necessarily just the hot tents they're a lot thicker than these are the hot tents are thicker they're either made of canvas or they're this they're this but it's double woven and it looks more like a you ever seen the pizza delivery guy bring the pizza to your house and he got that hot hot bag that's what that whole tent looks like it's like double sewn with some kind of insulation in the middle of the two walls so that's like a, a fishing tent what those look like so you don't necessarily need it it just depends on what you're doing and if you live in a really cold climate like you live up north somewhere in the snow, I say yes, get get two different kinds of tent. Because if you have a hot tent, here's the thing about a hot tent or a canvas tent. I've never owned one, but I've been doing extensive research on them. If you have a hot tent, you can make it cool because you can open all of the like a they're usually like called bell tents and they shape like a teepee. 
So you can open that whole bottom of that thing comes off. So you can have something like that. And that'll work in the summertime too. But these are just more breezy and easy to set up, right? More vents on the hot tent. So you can turn that hot tent into a four season tent like our friend said earlier today. And again, not to be left up for four seasons, but to be used in any of the four seasons. Okay, any questions at all? And then we could just get this ramped up. And keep watching because this week we're going to do a gas generator, solar generator mosh up. What link for the T3 tent doesn't seem to be working? You know what? Somebody just said a minute ago they got it. So you might want to check your computer again. It's not the T3, it's the T4. I check as soon as we get off, but I'm pretty sure it works. So that's it, you guys. Thank you for being here. Uh, I guess my rain tarp, my rain fly is dry, so I'm going to spray it, and then I'm going to head on in the house. It, the temperature just dropped like crazy. All right. So everybody have a wonderful night. Please be safe. Stay warm. I love you. Good night. Guava. All right. And yes, I was losing my damn mind that night. So if everybody was like, is he really going crazy? Yeah, kind of. Sleeping out in the tent in the dark with animals walking around you really truly does, with all jokes aside, freaks you out. I don't care how hardcore you are. It's, it's unsettling, okay? I'm being honest with you right now. I don't care how hard you are, and, and, and I, I think I am. But when you got all kind of stuff that, you know, the desires to eat you yeah make you a little make you a little weary okay so everybody have a wonderful night live home 73 i love you and i'm out